Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Majesty for the Realm. It's by Mark Andre and published by Z-Man Games. It plays two to four players, takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Majesty for the Realm, you are attempting to become the ruler of the land. You'll be creating your own little kingdom and attempting to make it more wealthy than your opponents by either improving upon your citizens' specialties or by halting your opponent's specialized citizens by attacking them. Of course, you can use knights as well to defend yourself and protect yourself from the oncoming onslaught by your opponents. I seek the finest and the bravest knights in the land to join me in my court at Camelot. In the game, you will be gathering cards from a tableau area, utilizing your citizens to increase your odds of getting better citizens, place them down into your tableau, and perform the actions on based on the card where you place your citizen. You'll go back and forth choosing citizens and placing them down until you have 12 cards for each player, and then you'll tally up your score, whoever has the most points or coins gained throughout the game, as well as a variety of other bo bonuses, such as having the most at each of the different locations, and having a, a plethora of different characters in different locations will score you bonus points. Thusly, the person with the most points equates to the Philotheus Kingdom in Majesty for the Realm, and you will win becoming the full-on ruler of all of the kingdoms playing the game. Right, I'll do you for that. You're what? Come here. What are you going to do, bleed on me? I'm invincible! The setup for the game is rather simple. Each player is going to get a set of eight cards. You'll place them in order from A1 all the way to A8, and it'll go from Mill to the Infirmary. Each player will get these eight cards and place them down to form basically their tableau area. They're also going to get a little cottage card, and you're going to be placing uh, five different little characters on top of them, the little meeples. Always remember that you're going to include these cards at random, shuffle them based on the number of players, and deal them out, always having at least one knight card in the set, because the person with the knight card is the person who will start the game off. You'll also go ahead and deal out a number of different cards. There's going to be the set one cards and the set two cards. Here are the set one, they'll have a number one on them, and a set two with the number two on them. Once you shuffle both decks, then based on the number of players, you'll take a certain number of cards out of the set one deck and place them on top of the set two deck, replacing these guys and moving them to the side. In a two player game, you'll only start with six number one cards, which is going to be the big beginning or original tableau that you'll deal out when playing the game. So when playing the game, take six cards from the top of the deck and place them out for all players to see. I got it, I got it! So, what? We'll work up a number six on them. Number six? I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that one. Well, that's where we go riding into town. A whopping and a whopping. The first space is the one furthest to the right of the player deck, and of course the last space is the one closest. Deal out all of the coins to an area in which players can reach, but no one will start with any coins. After that, set aside any number of additional player tokens, player cards, and of course tableaus that you won't be utilizing throughout the game. And then begin by having the knight player start by selecting a citizen and you're ready to go. Beginning with let's say you, because you drew the knight card, you'll simply choose one of the six cards available in front. This is basically the market area. If you want the first card, it's free. You'll take it and you'll place it down in the corresponding space represented by the symbol on the card. Sometimes cards will have multiple symbols. If that's the case, you'll choose one of the two and place it face up next to that space. So for instance, I've got the brewer here and I can place it just like this, following green with green. But maybe I didn't want to do that. I can go ahead and place this guy over here, following brown with brown. Whatever the case is, you can choose. However, if it does not have one, like for instance, this guy here, you're simply going to take it and place the innkeeper on the inn. If you do not want the first card, it's then going to cost you, and it'll cost you little town meeples. So for instance, if I wanted this one, the miller, I would simply have to take one of my little meeples and place it on each corresponding space I do not want to choose, starting from the furthest or the first space to the place that I want to gather. So I would then gather this card here, and I would go ahead and place it in the mill space, corresponding space represented by the icon. 
Once you have selected and placed down the character that you've chosen, you are then going to perform the action, and each of these spaces has their own unique actions. The mill will give you one point for each miller in the space underneath it, and in this case, she or he would just gather two coins into their pool. The next one here is the brewery. This is where you're going to have people brewing beer. You'll gather two coins plus one of these little guys uh, for each brewer there. And in addition, if you have a minimum of one miller, you're going to get two coins, but so will everybody else. The cottage will give you two points for every single miller, brewer, and person in a cottage. Uh, the guard house is going to allow you to uh, basically gather two coins for each guard, for each person in your barracks, and for each innkeeper. The barracks will give you three points for each knight, and the inn will give you four points for each innkeeper, and additionally, everybody who has a brewer is going to get three coins as well, including you, hopefully. The castle is going to net you five points for each of the characters in your castle, and it will also net you a single one of these guys to use. And then finally, the infirmary is where your characters will go when they pass away, uh, but they can be healed. If, for instance, you have chosen a card with one of these little guys on it. So for instance, if it was my turn, I could select this and I would take the meeple and I'd place it onto my card here. However, if all my spaces are no longer available, I'll take these guys and place them to the side, which I will then be removing at the end of my turn. I'll place this guy here. I'll gather points based on placement. And then at the end of my turn, if I have any leftover guys, I will simply discard them back to a pool and I will net one coin for each one that I discard because the maximum you can have at the end of your turn is five. And of course, moving these guys down, a new one will form. Another thing to note too in the game is that each of the abilities with a little signpost or a little location with a signpost is a bonus ability. And when performing the locations, always start from top and go to bottom. So for instance, if you're going to go to the cottage and let's say that this player has a knight in the infirmary and that they chose the cottage character, they took one and placed it here, not only would they gain two coins two coins per one of these symbols, for each one of these symbols that you have in your tableau, but you'll start with healing the top card of your infirmary, meaning you'll take this guy here and you'll place it back in a space that corresponds with its symbol. However, when you take a card from the infirmary and put it into one of your tableau spaces, you will not activate the effects. Then you will perform the effect of the location. And if it corresponds to the character that you healed, meaning that it gave you two points for having a knight, then so be it. Score bonus points if you can. And the game will keep going like that back and forth, back and forth, until each player has gathered 12 characters or units underneath their locations, at which point the game will end. You will tally up all the coins that you have already stored up th through the game. You will get points for each location that you have a character multiplied by itself. So in this instance, if this character here had, I don't know, we'll place a couple of these guys out here four locations of the eight, you will then take four, multiply it by four, and you will score 12 points. And the last thing you will score points for is majority rule. So if you're the person who has the most millers, you will get 10 points. If you're the person who has the most knights, you will get 14 points, and so on and so forth. The last thing here is the infirmary. For each character that you have there, you will lose a point. Speaking of infirmaries, the last thing I need to talk about is attacking and defending. When you place your characters on the barracks or the guardhouse, they will perform either attack actions or they will prevent you from being attacked. If you place a character, a knight, in your barracks and you have more knights than anybody has guards, each player will lose a character from their tableau from left all the way to right. So in this case, if for instance, I had three knights and he had two guards, this player would have less guards than me, than my knights, and thus they lose a character from their leftmost space, placing it into their infirmary. And if this character had three guards and I had three knights, then that character would suffer no losses. So you always want to be up in guards comparatively to character players who are gathering their knights, because knights are going to attack and send characters to the infirmary, thusly giving you no points at the end of the game, and in fact, minus one point for the characters that exist there. And that's basically the game, Majesty for the Realm. Pretty straightforward. Can you gather enough coins to become the Emperor or Empress of your kingdom? Find out in the game by picking it up down below in the description. You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs!
Majesty is a pretty straightforward tableau builder. All you do is gather a card, place it down in one of the locations that its symbol represents, enact that location's actions, gather coins, and pass back and forth until every player has 12, and then score via the uh, aspects that I told you so. And whoever has the most points is the winner. But there are a lot of combinations to these cards. And not only that, but there's also a B-side to the location. So if you want to play a more advanced version of the game, you can by simply turning over all locations for all players and utilizing those actions described in a handy dandy little rule set over here. So there's the A side and the B side for the game, which will explain what the abilities and actions and locations do. Additionally too, I like the fact that some of the cards have multiple characters on them and you can choose either the top or bottom aspects of them. And then other ones, as you get into the tier two cards, will actually give you more than one character of a specific type. And you're always attempting to be on top of each location that you want to have. Uh, the attack and defense is kind of a secondary thing you have to be careful of and watch out. If you notice that you only have two guards and somebody just got two knights and they're kind of going knight heavy and you don't want to lose your characters, you kind of have to keep up by gathering more guards but there's only a certain number of them available to you and so eventually you might have to take damage if you're not careful selection is key in this game you'll score a ton of points with the characters that don't do as much however you will not be able to defend yourself an additional one here is the castle which scores you a ton of points and gives you a ton of these meeples which you can utilize to get the cards that you need but you are in short supply of these and in fact you can't hold more than five a turn so be aware that it might not always be in your best interest to gather cards that might seem useful at a time when you are already kind of full up on the specific items that it's going to give you. I really enjoyed this game. This was quick and easy to learn, quick and easy to play, and we played more than once in each of the settings that we played this game in. If you are new to Tableau Builders, Majesty is a perfect choice for you. If you like great artwork, another great choice. I love the vivid imagery of the game, you feel immersed in it, and you understand what is going on, and you feel like you are building your kingdom by gathering workers and placing them in the buildings that you own. This game can be a little frustrating because sometimes cards may not come out that may not come out that you want, and if that is the case, you might be attacked more often depending on how players play aggressively in the game. Maybe they're not out to gain points, but maybe they're actually out to mess you over so that if they have just enough points, even though they weren't going for them because you were not able to hold enough points, then they can win the game that way. And because that, there's a variety of gameplay choices, but there's also a variety of stress related incidents in the game, which might cause you to not have the town of your dreams and thusly can be kind of irritating because some players when playing a game that involves building your tableau, you don't like other players to mess with you. You want to like a solitaire game like Mystic Veil. Vale. People don't kind of mess with you in that game, but in this one they do and they'll take cards that you want. And in general, taking cards that you want is a fairly straightforward aspect to most games. Uh, this one here has a limited number of cards that flip out based on the number of players. And when playing with more players, there's more cards available, obviously. And the good stuff, which is the tier two deck, will start coming out later, as opposed to really soon in a two player game, uh, which is, is just fine. Uh, this game here is a solid pickup for Tableau Builders. I have played this game more times than I can count. This is one of my wife's favorite Tableau Builders. Uh, we have played this with Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker, a number of times. And basically when somebody has never played a Tableau Builder, this is the one I like to take out. The tokens, are high quality, they feel nice in your hand, and there's a large amount of everything in the game, so you're not going to run out of anything throughout it as you gather certain items and tokens and whatnot that you need. This is an easy game. Uh, it's not one of those extremely thick, hard, thinky games. Yes, there is thought processes in this game. Yes, there is strategy in this game, but what's nice about it is something that you can play in between games, or you can play this throughout your entire game night, and you will feel very satisfied by picking this game up. If you've never heard of Majesty, now is the time to look into it because I personally really, really enjoyed it. Art quality, quality of design, quality of components, excellent mechanics, fun, quick, easy, simple to learn, a little bit of stress, a little bit of luck, and of course players can mess with you, but if that all sounds good to you, pick up this game because I highly, highly recommend it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Majesty for the Realm. If you're interested in the game, like I said before, there is a link down below in the description where you can pick up the game. You can also go ahead and head over to unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're constantly putting out new articles to reviews uh, for reviews of games that you may not have heard of before, and of course ones that are not found on my YouTube 
YouTube channel. Join us on Patreon. If you support us for a dollar, it does greatly help us out. We'll be able to do more stuff like giveaways and keep our live streams going, which we do every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Thank you guys so much for watching. We greatly appreciate it. And as always, we look forward to defeating your realm next time. All right, we'll call it a draw.